I sing for joy. Come on, let's all bless the name of the Lord in our own words. A pleasant Sunday morning to everyone and we thank God again for this time that you know we can be in the presence of the Lord to worship him to honor him and this time as we move forward let us pray for God's blessing and help dear Lord we thank you so much again for this morning that we can be together Lord in your presence of God to consider your words to meditate upon it and thank you that the Holy Spirit the Lord will help us to give us more understanding and may this word this morning Lord truly uh, motivate us in a walk with you and to declare that you're the Lord of our lives so Lord I submit myself to you this morning in Jesus name I pray amen amen praise God so yeah let's move on with the message of the Lord today and uh, last Sunday, we talked on how to deal with human weaknesses, right? If you still remember the message about that. And we have an assurance and promise from the, word of the God, from the Word of God that we can overcome human weaknesses that could potentially, you know, affect our spiritual life. But this morning, we will study the fruit of the Spirit, the opposite of the works of the flesh mentioned in the same chapter 5 of the book of Galatians. Let's read our text that is taken from the book of Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 23. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like this. And let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. And verse 22 says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Wow. So in one reading, you will notice, you know, the opposite, right? Or the contrast. It's uh, the first one talks about the ne negative aspect of our human nature and then the positive aspect and that is the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, if you will notice in verse 2, uh, the uh, verse is, the word but in verse 2 is very important because it is a turning point, a paradigm shift reference, a word that points us to another much better contrast, like from the works of the flesh to the fruit of the Spirit. In verse 19 to 21, speaks of uh, the negative aspect of our sinful nature. Then the word but brings us to a much better position and is about the positive aspect despite the sinfulness of our human nature. It is very encouraging to take note that in the same fallen nature of man that produces the works of the flesh is also the possibility of producing the fruit of the Spirit, right? It is like saying, out of the mud comes the lotus flower, meaning out of our sinful nature is also the possibility of having the fruit of the Spirit. Now let's break down the verses. Let's read in Galatians 5, 20-23. And it's about the fruit of the Spirit. It says there, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control there is no law against these things so it is clear from our text that the fruit is produced by the holy spirit produced by the holy spirit it is not accomplished 
by the flesh. As we grow more and more in the Lord, the more this fruit is produced in our lives. Amen. Praise God. Now, there are nine fruits listed here. But yet, it says the fruit of the Spirit. That is singular fruit. And you know why? Because these nine fruits are considered as one and cannot, as, as a unit, shall I say, as a unit, and one cannot be singled out. For example, like a family, the word family, it is a single unit of our society, yet it is composed of father, mother, and children, right? The, 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 the family is, is a unit. So in other words, fruit here functions as a collective singular. But each fruit is not an isolated graces, but all connected from one source, and that is the Holy Spirit. Unlike the works of the flesh, they are not connected and can be isolated from each other. Then, then if you'll notice again, the last statement says, there is no law against these things. Meaning, if your life demonstrates these fruits, there is no conflict with the Jewish laws. Now, if you understand the background of the book of Galatians, Paul was refuting some of the Jewish teachers that confuses the believers in Galatia because they teach that circumcision and obedience of the law are prerequisite to salvation, which is, again, the opposite of what Paul is teaching, that salvation is by faith, you know, by grace through faith. And so he was saying here that producing the fruit of the Spirit is not a violation of the law. Violation of the law. When you possess, when you allow the Holy Spirit to produce this in your lives and demonstrate this in your walk with the Lord, it's not against the law. There's no law against this. And furthermore, like the visibility of the works of the flesh, the fruit of the Spirit is also visible. It can be seen by others. It can be experienced by others with us. And you know what? People will know you and see you by the works of the flesh or by the fruit of the Spirit. So in other words, to me, in my understanding, know that your lives can be defined either by the works of the flesh or the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit in your life. And people see it. Let us now consider the threefold division of, of, of the fruit of the Spirit. The first three fruits that comes from the enduring Spirit in our lives after we're born again is an instant experience. The moment we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And this is the first division. And first is love. Because there's love, joy, and peace. So love, love is, you know, uh, we experience and realize the love of God. And we understood that our salvation is a gift from God who loved us, right? So there is an instant experience, an instant realization. You know, when we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and we know we're forgiven, right away we sense that we're embraced by the love of God. We experience the love of God. We experience the warmth of God's love. And Romans 5, 5 tells us, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you will read there, you know, the practical demonstrations of love. So, yeah, right? Is that, that's my experience. I don't know about you. But the moment I received Christ, the moment I, was, that I understood that I was forgiven of my sin, you know, and I understood John 3.16, I just felt the love of God. And even until now, up from, the, uh, you know, from that moment up to this time, you know, you can still sense the love of God in our hearts. And this love of God is called agape in the Greek word, which is divine love, right? And when we have the divine love in our lives, you know, that will also give us the ability to give love to those around us. Now, the second part of this first division is not only love but joy, now, after we receive the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we experience joy, right? Joy is much a deeper emotion than happiness. It does not come from an outside source like with happiness. 
Joy comes as a fruit of the Spirit in, our, in us. And our degree of joy grows deeper as we keep in step with the Spirit, right? And one thing nice with, with, with this uh, joy as produced by the Holy Spirit is that we don't need to seek joy. It comes naturally from within us as a result of the operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If you're living, you know, in the realm of the Spirit, you will always be filled with the joy of the Lord. If we are in Jesus, He promised us that He will give us joy. In John 15, 11, tells us, you know, these things I have spoken to you that, you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Amen. Praise God. So, this joy comes from the Lord. I mean, this joy is produced by the Holy Spirit in, in our lives. If we allow the Holy Spirit, if we live in the Holy Spirit, you know, the result that the Holy Spirit will produce joy, not only in some occasions or, or sometimes, but on a daily basis. You know, as I say, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, that joy remains in us as produced by the Holy Spirit. I mean, the third part of this division also is peace. Peace. Now, if you notice me, perhaps even now we, we, we greet one another. Some people greet one another with shalom because Jewish people greet one another with this word shalom or peace. And it connotes what? Peace, prosperity, wellness, health, completeness, safety. Now, but then we have to remember that this joy or that this peace that we receive from the Lord isn't just a personal fruit of the Spirit. It is a fruit of living out our lives in the Christian community in a peaceful and harmonious way. You know, I think in my observation, if you have personal peace, if you have peace within you, you have the peace with God and you have the peace of God in your life, it's easy for us to live peacefully and harmoniously in the community of believers. Now, this peace that comes from the Holy Spirit does not mean lack of conflict. Yes. In John 14, 27, you know, Jesus said, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let be afraid. Amen. Also in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So here, Jesus saying that, yes, my peace I will give it to you. Because in this world, you will have troubles. You will have hardship. You will be persecuted. You will have tribulation. But in the midst of those situations, in the midst of those circumstances in your lives, you know, the peace of God, that passes understanding, hallelujah, amen, will control your hearts and mind. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this, this is the first part of our, of the, of the, what you call this, the fruit of the Spirit produced in our lives. The first one, the first division is love, joy, and peace. That is our personal experience. Now the second uh, division of the fruit of the spirits are long-suffering, kindness, and goodness. And these are manifested toward men. The first division is our own personal experience. The second division is demonstrated towards others, towards all men. And they're put into practice in a relationship with one another. The first division that is love, joy, and peace is a personal experience, as I said, that's coming from within as a result of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit and manifested through long-suffering kindness and goodness to men. Now, these fruits are, are, are still connected with the first division, you know, the second one is connected because they're interconnected. They're one, right? They're one unit. They relate to one another. They produce one to one another. So the first one in the second division is long suffering. Now, long suffering describes the attitude of patient endurance towards inflectors of injury or enemies. Wow. If we genuinely experience the love of God that is given to us through the presence of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, then love suffers long, is not easily provoked, and is not soon angry, right? So 
that's that's the the uh, the, the fruit of the spirit here long suffering amen and the second one is kindness now the new testament usage focuses on four facets of kindness right under kindness there are four facets there's one is friendliness compassion helpfulness and forbearance now friendliness is kind you know what kindness is friendly seeking to form and foster personal relationships kindness reaches out right when you're you, you, you know uh, when you're friendly because you know kindness uh, leads to being friendly if you're kind you are friendly and the second facet here is compassion compassion is the second earmark of kindness and compassion is about a ready sympathy a sincere concern for the needs of another uh, you know kindness cares Ephesians 4 32 says be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you thank you Lord the third facet of kindness is helpfulness it means to be generous willing to extend yourself in practical ways to help others helpfulness if you are kind you are helpful I mean just part of it you know because kindness leads to being helpful and the last facet of kindness is forbearance forbearance in the face of provocation if you have observed you know that God's purpose uh, God's I mean God's response to hostility is kindness it is the very root of God's nature and the Holy Spirit is maturing the Father's kindness in our character hallelujah praise God so let's move on and so I think this is the uh, long-suffering kind goodness this is the third uh, fruitless spirit under the division under the second division and this one is goodness what is goodness it is <clears throat> what a positive moral quality characterized especially by interest in the welfare of others Wow, buutan, goodness. You think about the welfare of other people. A good person always think of the needs of other people. A good person always think of how to extend help to other people. You know, goodness. God is good. God is always good because He always think about our welfare. And this is, you know, the, the nature, the character of God that the Holy Spirit wanted to produce in our lives. A good person is not happy with the misery of other people. A good person will always be there to assist to help somehow to bring comfort to those who are in need. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 tells us, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will you know, reap harvest if we do not give up. I mean, not giving up good works, right? Or being good. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So that's goodness. Now, the third division of the fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, these are connected from the first division, the second division, and now the first division or the third category. These three fruits of the spirit seems to, be, to point to the world in which the Christian life is to be lived in the midst of difficulties and oppositions. The first division, as I said, is you know is more on our personal experience, and it leads to the second division that is you know as we relate to men, and the third the third category uh, uh, division is about living you know this fruit in the spirit. In the midst of difficulties and opposition we experience in the world the Bible says that in this world you will have tribulation that's what Jesus said you know in this world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world so with that promise that Jesus said I have overcome the world that gives us an assurance you know of victory that gives us assurance that we are safe secured and protected as we go through this 
Now, as followers of Jesus Christ, this is expected. The tribulation, the hardship, the persecution, especially during the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is expected. But even though we suffer persecution and oppositions in this world, we are expected to be faithful or, in other words, trustworthy. Right? To be trustworthy. You know, faithfulness means that which evokes trust and faith here, you know. The state of being someone in whom confidence can be placed. Faithfulness, reliability, fidelity, and commitment. Right? Now, faithfulness is, is what God has called us to do in this world. Right? Hardship in life is really a test of faithfulness and trustworthiness. It can reveal, you know, hardship can reveal whether you're faithful or trustworthy. Amen. Now, the second fruit of the Spirit under this category of division is gentleness or meekness. And it is about submissive, uh, submissiveness of spirit, uh, yeah, which does not lift itself up against oppositions, but bends like reed before the storm. And there is the quality of not being overly impressed by a sense of oneself's important or one's self self importance gentleness humility courtesy considerateness meekness you know and this is the character of Jesus that the holy spirit is producing in our lives yes because the 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 the, the fruit of the spirit that is produced by the spirit in life is the standard from which we measure ourselves when it comes to Christ likeness in Matthew 11, 20, it says there, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So here, you know, we see the nature, the character, the attitude, the mindset, the wholeness of Christ is the standard from which we should be become, and we should be measured upon, right? Or to be measured with. Hallelujah. So, uh, Excuse me. Another one is self-control or temperance. Self-control and temperance means restraint of one's emotions, impulses, or desire. Self-control. The virtue of one who masters his desires and passions, especially his sensual appetite, in relation to the things of the world, right? The pleasures of the world. The material things of the world, the sensual side of the world, you know, that is where we exercise self-control. Now, unlike the other fruit of the Spirit, self-control never occurs with reference to the character of God. Because it is an individual virtue. God doesn't need self-control. He is God. He is sovereign. Right? But us, as a person, as a Christian... We need this individual virtue of self-control. So, this is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These virtues are produced by the Holy Spirit in us to be more like Christ. Now, if we live in the realm of the flesh... And according to the Bible, that we no longer live in the realm of the flesh, but we live in the realm of the spirit. But if ever we live in the realm of the spirit or of the flesh, then we, you know, we, we produce the works of the flesh. But the Bible said we no longer live in the realm of this of the flesh, but we live in the realm of the spirit. And so the spirit now produces the fruit of the spirit in our lives, right? That gives us life and peace. Now, I have this question. How do we know if we have the fruit of the Spirit in our lives? How do we know if the Holy Spirit is producing you know, this fruit in our lives? I think and I believe, you know, God will bring us into situations, people, and circumstances to reveal or to produce these virtues in our lives. For example, you know, the fruit of the Spirit that is love. In a practical way, for the Holy Spirit to produce love in our lives, you know, He will expose you to unlovable people, right? And 
see if you will respond in love and see if you know you will you will react in love about joy he will allow you to go through disappointments yeah there might be some disappointments you know and uh, you know the, the things you're expecting didn't come true or or pain or hurt whatever it is you know when you go through that you still have that inner inner joy you still have the joy of the lord in your hearts yes these things will reveal or God, if God wanted to produce this joy in your spirit, He will let you go through that until you will say, God, still give me joy, right? And with peace, He will let you experience conflict. Will you experience uh, uh, peace even though you're in the midst of conflict? Patience. He will bring you your trying moments, trying situations, challenging or, or, or lingering situations. You become under pressure. Will you be patient? Kindness. He will bring people to your life, you know, that will oppose you. Are you going to respond in kindness? They may say things against you or just merely oppose you. Will you still be kind in your response? Goodness. He will show you people in need. There are so many people around us that you need. Can we be good to them? Are we showing goodness to them? Faithfulness. He will allow hardship that will challenge your trustworthiness. Yes. Will this hardship and trials you're going through make you more trustworthy? God will develop trustworthiness and faithfulness because hardship, as I said, will expose whether you're trustworthy or faithful. And number eight is gentleness or, or meekness. He will bring you success, give you prosperity. To see if, you know, you will promote yourself or give back the glory to God, right? And finally, self-control. You will be exposed to things of this world, especially, you know, the sensual appetite around us. Are you going to have self-control? Now, for the Spirit to, to continue producing this fruit in our lives, we need, first and foremost, we need to understand, you know, we have to walk by the Spirit, Galatians 5.16 says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Right? Walk in the Spirit. Meaning, live under the direction or guidance of the Holy Spirit. Another one is, be led by the Spirit. Not only walk by the Spirit, but also be led by the Spirit. Galatians 5.18. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Thank you, Jesus. And in Galatians 5.25, it's about conforming, conform with the Spirit. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Don't let the Spirit go ahead of you. Don't stay behind the Holy Spirit. Be in step with the Spirit. Live together. Walk together. Right? With the Spirit. Being in step with the Spirit. Praise God. It says there, you know, in Galatians 5.25 from the Living Bible verse, it says, If you're living now by the Holy Spirit's power, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Amen. Glory to Jesus, right? So, I mean, Paul is just saying, right now we're living. Right? We are living you know, with the Spirit's power. And so let us allow the Holy Spirit, amen, to guide us in every part of our lives lives hallelujah thank you jesus so my fellow brethren my brothers and sisters in christ watching listening to this online service you know i let us desire to live in the realm of the spirit so that the spirit can continually produce the fruit of the spirit in our lives becoming more likes daily you know if you live in the realm of the spirit amen we cannot follow the dictates of the works of the flesh because the Holy Spirit takes over us. Hallelujah. And you know the result. The Bible says those who live in the works of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. But those who walk in the Spirit and the realm of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit is producing the fruits of the Spirit in their lives, they will have life and peace. Praise God. This is the will of God for us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much again. 
that despite our sinfulness, despite that we are still in the sinful nature, we have an assurance from you through the power of the Holy Spirit that out of the sinful nature of God, Amen, can also produce the fruit of the Spirit that we need nowadays. So God, I pray that may, you, may each of us as followers of Jesus Christ remain conscious continually to demonstrate the production of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives by your grace. So thank you, bless the words I spoke this morning and bless the words that you people heard today. May this be a reminder as we walk in the Spirit, as we are being led by the Spirit, and as we get in step with the Holy Spirit. Lord, today in the name of Jesus, there might be some people here watching and listening to this online service that are not feeling good in Jesus' name. They're not feeling well, dear God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Release your healing power to them. Bring comfort to them in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Whatever their needs be, O oh God, Lord, you have the promise that you supply our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus, O oh Lord. And Lord, nothing is impossible with you. You promise us, Lord, that if we ask in faith, in prayer, Lord, you will hear us, O God, and grant us our heart's desire. And so today, Lord, I also release blessing to everyone today. Lord, blessing materially, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. Lord, the whole person, O God, amen, may be under the favor of the Lord. So God, thank you. We receive the blessings now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless and until next time.